Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, a Sadopa leader questioned by police. Fiji First launches its manifesto. And pre-polling comes to an end. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. Sadopa leader Siti Veni Rambuka was questioned by the Police Criminal Investigations Department in Suva this afternoon. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio says Rumbuka was questioned in relation to comments made during FBC's Navake Kelly radio talkback show this week, which are alleged to be in, pre in breach of the Information Act. Rumbuka was accompanied by his lawyer Filimoni Vosarongo. Speaking at Sidelpa's last rally in Alsori today before blackout period, Rumbuka says he was called by the police at around 8.30 last night, where he was requested to be present at the CID headquarters this afternoon for interrogation. He has also called on his followers and supporters to respect the law. Meanwhile, Gilio says they will issue a statement once the interrogation has been completed. With only three days to go before Election Day, the Fiji First has launched their 2018 manifesto outlining their plan to build upon the success of the last four years of governing based on their 2014 manifesto. Fiji First says this year's manifesto will continue the programs they have laid out for a more prosperous nation, including new policies that will benefit every Fijian, the economy and our nation. Sugarcane farmers are in for a win-win situation, with them getting shares in the Fiji Sugar Corporation. Akusita Tale has more. Fiji First has promised to allocate 10% of its shares in the Fiji Sugar Corporation to sugarcane farmers through a trust mechanism. Individual farmers' allocation of shares will depend on the tonnage of cane produce. VAT will remain at 9%. New roads will be developed and existing ones improved, meaning more road expansions, including four-lane projects to ease traffic flow and bicycle tracks to encourage a more healthy Fijian population. Consideration will be given to diverting roads inland to open up land for social and economic development which will include development of access roads to connect farming areas to markets. The Fiji First will also create bus lanes on four-lane roads and park-and-ride schemes to promote bus usage for commuting in urban and peri-urban areas. The party has promised to enact a new law early next year to establish an independent lands tribunal to effectively and efficiently handle complaints against TLTB and the Lands Department by ETOK land-owning units, individual lessees, tenants, occupants, as well as informal or squatter residents. Fiji First will pay for all visits to a private general practitioner in your locality and together with funding support from government will also incentivize private doctors to provide services in rural and maritime areas. This initiative will give ordinary Fijians access to a family doctor. New kidney dialysis centers will be established in Nandi and Andera that will provide patients the most economical access to treatment of kidney disease. Fiji First will subsidize 50% of kidney dialysis costs for households with income levels below $30,000. A new 40 megaliter treatment plant will be constructed in Viria Rewa to meet the demand in the greater Suva and Osori area. The party has also promised to introduce crop insurance for the protection of Fijian farmers. The education system will be made more inclusive by establishing facilities to accommodate children with disabilities and special needs. The party will also recruit professional counselors for students to help them deal with career and personal choices. The Fiji First government will facilitate the increase in mobile phone and internet connectivity over the next 14 months in Nayau, Matuku, Totoya, Namuka, Namuamua, Dikombia Island, Tawake, Sangani, Ono, Tubuda, Kambara, Namuka and Kioa Island. The party will establish a national sports academy to support the development of future and elite sportsperson and Olympians. Sports development will include talent identification, specialized training, exposure to specialized coaching and training methods, and management of sports injuries and dietary programs. 
The Fiji Fest will bid for the 2023 Pacific Games and 2026 Commonwealth Games. The Fiji Fest has also promised to increase police force numbers from 4,100 to 7,300 within five years. Fijians have been encouraged to review the party policies and compare them with what others claim to offer. Akusita Tali, FBC News. A big crowd turned up in Lautoka today as the Fiji First Party wrapped up its campaign for the general election. Fiji First leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama and his 50 candidates spoke to the hundreds gathered and also explained their manifesto. Mbaini Marama took the opportunity to speak to the people and also revealed his vision for Fiji. We cross live to Felipe Naikaso, who has been covering the Fiji First campaigns in the West. Felipe, how did the final rally turn out today for the ruling party? Yes, Jackie, the Fiji First Party held its final fun day here in Lotoka City, with more than 3,000 of its supporters standing up here at Churchill Park. With the party also launching its manifesto in bar last night, this was an opportunity for the supporters to come and talk to the uh, Fiji First leader or the Fiji First Party leader, the general secretary uh, of the party, and to, to discuss on the points of the manifesto that was launched last night in bar. I also spoke to a few families that, have, that are here and what they said about the manifesto is that it's a good manifesto and it's an indication that no Fijian will be left behind. The candidates of the party also had an opportunity to address uh, the supporters that gathered here and also the uh, general secretary of the party and the Fiji First Party leader addressed the supporters of all gathered this afternoon. Uh, with the blackout period also commencing from this Sunday at 12 a.m., the Fiji First Party state this was an opportunity for them to try and get voters to vote for them come Wednesday. Jackie. The Fiji Elections Office has concluded pre-polling, however has highlighted the voter turnout numbers have decreased compared to the 2014 election. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sanim says as of 2.30 p.m., a total of 9,694 out of 14,777 registered pre-poll voters cast their vote in the Central Division. The Eastern Division recorded only 11,432 Fijians voting out of 19,384 that were registered. 9,763 cast their votes in the Northern Division, compared to the 14,709 registered, while out of the 22,040 voters in the West, only 13,778 voted. Sanim says the decrease were a result of a few factors. In this case, some of the voters had moved to Suva but didn't change their venue. At Muaninuku, 59 registered voters were expected to vote, but some villagers are Jehovah's Witnesses and did not come to vote. Also, at Dravuwalu village, the village headman informed the awareness team that 10 of the voters could not vote because they were deceased. Meanwhile, Sanim has hit out at the Fiji Times for sensationalizing some of the news with regards to voters. The voter chose to change his venue from Namarai to Sayoko, and we have given you the exact dates. And um, we have noted that when we clarify things for the Fiji Times, the editor comes out and calls us as attacking the Fiji Times. But I think it's, very, it's, a, it's a very good time for the editor to look deep into his own uh, institution and see why they continue to sensationalize news. Claims by Sadalpa that highly educated and urban-based Ithao K cannot attend provincial council meetings. Sadalpa's candidate Opithai Ravai made these comments at a rally in Suva last night, something which has been denied by the Ithao K Affairs Ministry. Savaratambo reports. Speaking to more than 200 people last night, Opithai Ravai claims the current laws for provincial council meetings needs to change. The regulation I was, I was reading was quite funny and odd to me. It said if you're an indigenous person and you're educated and you're living in the urban areas, you can't attend a provincial council meeting. It says there. I'll just try and read it to you. It, it, you know, it's crazy, but it's there. 
Itoke Affairs Permanent Secretary Naipote Katoni Tambo has denied this and is advising candidates not to misinterpret any regulation pertaining to Itoke Affairs. This is something new to us and uh, we fear about the information that we have received and uh, I'm advising candidates to please seek clarification before commenting on any issue. FBC News also understands that in any provincial council meeting, all people belonging to the province have always been invited to partake. Sapira Tambua, FBC News. Still to come, more on the 2018 general election. And Fijians make most of free Wi-Fi. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I answer. Why are you washing size, a lambasa? And the teletain of our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and sir. We have the Timeli, a point of town, no Hinatoka, Teletakin and our Roman and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Number two, and a sir. Never go find in a town, no washing a toka, get on the Teletakan and bullet fib, number two, and a sir. Bula FM, number two, and a sir. National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad says he is ready to work with any of his political opponents. Speaking at a rally in Lombasa yesterday, NFP candidates gave their viewpoints on what they will do should they form the next government. Prasad gave particular attention to Fiji First Leader Vorengem Bainimarama. <laughs> We now join Akusita Tale, who was live at the final NFP rally in Asinu. Akusita, have you managed to speak to the party officials on what the next 24 hours will be like in terms of their campaigning? Thanks, Jackie. We're here at uh, Nasi uh, we're here at uh, NFP's final rally uh, here at Rishikul uh, Primary School. And uh, joining us this evening is Mr. Pio Tikundundua, the president of the party. Mr. Tikundundua, thank you for joining FBC no. News uh, this you. evening. Um, 24 hours remain for the party before Fiji heads into a blackout period. What plans does the party have from now until midnight tomorrow? Yeah, well, we're starting with this uh, final rally today. We've done all our rallies for the other divisions. Uh, essentially just to consolidate on our position here and reinforce our points and that will pretty much be you know what's happening tonight here uh, with regards to you know the rest of the 24 hours uh, we are uh, you know we are we are being uh, uh, you know we've been guided by the laws and um, we, we know we have to do a blackout on Sunday so we you know putting down our banners you know confirming to the laws as the law would uh, suggest yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Pietro Dundua. No. And we wish you and your party well for next Wednesday. Thank you. No value. Thanks, Jackie. Farmers and middlemen will be affected with the increase in the national minimum wage rate proposed by some political parties. The current minimum wage rate stands at $2.68 an hour, and the proposed increase of $4, $5, even $10 will pose a threat to them. Sainani Boiler visited the Suva Municipal Market and files this report. 61-year-old Sawani Fama Akaripa Korosaya, who has been selling goods to middlemen in the Suva Municipal Market, says they will increase the prices of vegetables and root crops if the minimum wage rate increases. If they increase the minimum wage rate, we will also need more money as farmers. The bulk work is done by us, and I knew that other farmers will agree with me. We plow the land, we plant, we wait for months to harvest. Yes, we will increase the price of vegetables if there will be an increase in the national minimum wage rate. Rajan Sami, a well-known middleman in the silver municipal market, says vegetable prices are determined by farmers. In the market, uh, you, we go with the price with the farmers. And uh, when it's uh, short supply, the price is high. So the, market, uh, the price in the market is high. And, it, and when it's in uh, abundance, the price is uh, low. For 66-year-old Kenard Valentine, who has been a middleman for almost six years, says the increase will greatly affect them. 
middlemen and other small companies which they give uh, 250 or 3 dollars an hour and uh, you try to force them and put things down through their throat to get uh, longer to make them 5 dollars an hour I don't think so that's uh, any reasonable uh, way of uh, doing things eh? it doesn't come easy talking is very easy but to work on it it's very hard. The National Federation Party has proposed the $5 minimum wage rate and an increase to $4 as proposed by Sudalpa and with the Hope Fiji, an increase of $10. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Fiji First Party leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama says his political opponents continue to lie to the people of this country. Mbaini Marama took a swipe at Sudalpa candidate Mikaele Lewere for falsifying information during a campaign meeting. He says Sudalpa leader Sitiveni Rombuka says their candidates have been told not to talk of anything outside of their manifesto. But this is proving to be wrong. One of his candidates, uh, Lewere, last week in Ngaloa in Serua, said that the 20 cents that you play for the plastic bag, 10 cents go to me, 10 cents goes to the AG. And the equal, the equal is divided between me and AG. That's the kind of stories that these candidates go out and, and, and tell the public. And because he's, a, he's been a candidate for the last four years, people believe him. They don't know that they've been lied to. Walesi director Robert Khan has revealed that the free Wi-Fi service is proving a hit amongst Fijians. While the launch of free Wi-Fi in Valilevu today, Khan says they will keep on expanding the digital platform to empower youths. He adds they will keep on adding areas in the initiative as it provides opportunities for Fijians to enter the digital world. Meanwhile, he says... There are a lot of people who are taking advantage of the Walesi set-up boxes as well. He has 122,000 plus boxes across Fiji. We've got 19,500 plus uh, apps downloaded, and we've got 19,000 users for um, public Wi Fi services weekly. Ahead in sports tonight, Flying Fijians countdown to test. And a Sinu club keeps winning streak. Details after the break. Lola, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outriga, Coroco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osori. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic. Fiji Airways Flying Fijians captain Domenico Wanganimbrotu will have no problem with his new job description of leading the team in tomorrow's match against Scotland at 3.30 a.m. Wanganimbrotu, who replaces outgoing skipper Akapu Singera, will be supported by the experienced boys in the team. Head coach John McKee says his new captain will not have any problems in leading the team. Dominique has always been part of our, our leadership group and, and we know what a well-respected player is, is amongst the group. Um, Dominico, you know, a very astute player tactically around the way we want to play the game. He's had a lot of good input at, at training, giving players feedback around the, around the way things and, and asking questions of players in training to make, to make sure everyone's really on, on top of their game. Scotland's rugby coach Gregor Townsend says flying Fijian star Leone Nakarawa is an outstanding player who has developed into a leader on the rugby field. The Fiji Airways men's sevens team will battle New Zealand in the cup final of the Oceania Sevens Championship at Suvis ANZ Stadium tonight. The Gareth Baber coach side beat Samoa 36-7 in its semi-final, while New Zealand defeated Australia 14-5 this afternoon. Meanwhile, Australia will play New Zealand in the women's final of the Oceania Sevens after Australia thrashed the Fijiana 29-0 and New Zealand beat PNG 31-0. The women's final kicks off at 7.41 p.m., while Fiji takes on New Zealand in the men's cup final at 8.08 p.m. The Friends United of Nasinu continues its unbeaten run in the Vodafone National Club Championship Southern Zone playoffs underway at the Fiji FA Academy ground in Vatuanga Suva.
The side defeated Combined Brothers of Suva 5-0 in its second pool match today after hammering Nakasi Lions 7-0 in its opening pool game yesterday. Coach Tama Vosunga says the players have been reminded to stay focused and prepare for the upcoming matches. The message is just uh, simple to the boys. Is, uh, we're taking a game at a game. This is just a qualifying round, but the main one is next week, the club championship. So tomorrow is just the uh, same as what we've been doing, trying to score, score more goals so that uh, it builds uh, confidence for the boys. Jack Goodhue is back in the All Blacks lineup and ready for the biggest test of his career. He's named to start at centre against England tomorrow morning when the All Blacks play at Twickenham. Trough of low pressure with associated cloud and showers remains slow moving over the east of Fiji. It continues to gradually move westwards towards the group and affects the eastern parts of the country until later tomorrow. Taking a look at the west, a beautiful day in all areas with temperatures in the 30s. Eastwards from Pack Harbour to Suva, another good day with sun out shining bright. And up north it was cloudy with some showers. At sea southeast winds 22-25 knots, rough seas. For the tides, the next high tide is at 9.22 p.m. with the low tide at 3.50 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.23 a.m. For tomorrow, occasional showers with isolated heavy falls and possible thunderstorms over Lomaiviti and Lao Group, the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, it's fine apart from possible isolated afternoon or evening showers. And looking further on to Monday, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands, elsewhere afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Sudelpa leader questioned by police. BG first launches its manifesto and pre-polling comes to an end. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we're asking... Are you prepared to pay your house help and gardener $5 an hour? Visit our FBC website to answer. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. I'm Jyotishma, I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirch FM. Mirch FM is hot. Singatoka Mirch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirch FM, Rock Team Lambasa. I'm Sona Min, Nasori Jackson, Mirch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Single Line. Mirch FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirch FM here in Nasori. Mirch FM is hot. Mirch FM is hot.